Hey there, little mama. You know, there is a back to school time where everybody's real excited to get back into school. And I thought that I would tell you a little secret that little Miss Mona has. For all the years that I took my kids to school and picked them up and did all the room moms and all that stuff, there was one thing that I absolutely hated. Oh my gosh, I hated it so bad. I didn't want to do it. But you know what? I did it. And I'm really glad I did. And today, on Moms Like Us, I'm going to convince you why it probably was really yucky and I didn't want to do it. You probably don't either. But I'm going to tell you why you'll be really glad if you do on today's Moms Like Us Do Things Like This. Welcome to the Moms Like Us podcast where moms just like you learn strategies, systems, and skills through expert interviews and real-life insight designed to take your marriage, mothering, and home to the expert level. Hi, I'm Mona Corwin, your mom mentor and host, author, international speaker, and the founder of the Moms Like Us Academy. I've been coaching moms for over 25 years, and I have some really good news for you. Motherhood isn't a natural talent. It's a skill and you can learn it. You can crush it at motherhood instead of motherhood crushing you. So let's get to today's show. Okay, well, the truth is, there are some things we do as moms, and we just do it because we have to do it, and we don't like it. One of those is changing diapers, right? But I don't know about you, but for the most of my life, because I was a mother like forever... (laughs) With five kids, and they were really, really spread out, I had to do this one thing that I just absolutely hated. Now, I know I've teased you enough about it, but maybe you'll agree, maybe you won't. I absolutely hate carpool. Anybody with me? Carpool. It just... (laughs) carpool line. It's the carpool line. Like nothing made it good. You know, I tried to take a cup of coffee and I know a lot of you are smart and do your Bible study then or something, but I just was in a knot the whole time I was there and people were moving or not moving and cutting in line. Carpool. I hated carpool. Now I did figure out a way to do carpool, but I had to wait till my kids were a little bit bigger. But I told them, Y'all go and and visit with your friends because your mom, she's going to be in the back of the line because she is an experienced mom. I never was in the front of the line. Well, maybe a little bit for Molly when she first came because she was scared. But that's it. That is it. I was always in the back line because I hated carpool. Even today when I drive by the school, because my kids' school is still right here, I see all those women in carpool. I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I'm not in carpool. But I want to tell you, I did it. I did carpool. Yes, I did make it so it was good for me. But I want to tell you why carpool is so important. And it's this. You pick your kids up at a really important time of their day. It is the transition period between being in school with all their friends and all the noise and all the activity and even at the end of school day, you know, gathering up all their stuff and everything and and getting out to carpool, you take your kids into your car and your car's like this secret magic machine that transitions, transitions them into home, transitions them out of all the stuff and into like the sanctuary of your home. Now, some of you might be going directly to, you know, gymnastics or something like that, but you're still transitioning them. There's still a time period where they're coming from school and they're coming in with you. And the fact that you are there, I just, I can't tell you how important it is. I think it's the unsung thing that moms do. Like we know that waking them up in the morning and rubbing their little backs, I would always say to my kids, rise and shine, rise and shine, wake up buttercup. I have to tell you, my kids, every single one of them never woke up to their alarm clock. And I shouldn't say never, but on average, 
They did not wake up to the alarm clock. It was either Warren or I that would wake them up because we wanted to bring them from the transition of sleep into their day in a real sweet, loving way. And we did the same thing with, um, with when they went to bed. Very, very transitional, very intentional about communicating with them. You probably do both of those too. I have to say, um, even on my, always when my kids went off to school, I would call them like on their first day of class and catch them before their alarm went off. And I'd say, wake up, buttercup. Rise and shine. <laughs> Smell the coffee. You know, things like that. Because it was just something that I got to do for me. I got to be there and see their sweet little faces when they woke up and all of that. It was one of the privileges I had of being an at-home mom. Another privilege is picking them up from school. Now, if you, if you um, homeschool your kids, this doesn't really apply, but it still applies for transitioning from anything that they're doing into another transition. But I noticed when I would pick my kids up, they would have so much to say, all the stories, all the stuff. They were excited with their papers. They were excited to, to see me. And they would get in the car and they would all start talking at once. Now, it was wonderful because all of that energy and everything, I was able to go through with each one of them. And we had to do it kind of quick for the, the highlights. And then we went back around and we talked again. We lived kind of far from the school, so it made it so we could do it really well. Even when I had one, you know, I had a couple that were closer to the school, and I was still able to have that time to focus on them and what they were saying. They're driving the car, they're looking forward, or they're looking at you from the back seat, and they're talking, 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 talking. And you are hearing it all fresh, 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 fresh. I knew that it was something special. After a while, I noticed, oh my goodness, when we sat down to eat, eat dinner that night, they would, um, I said, you know, my husband would say, tell me about your day, and we would take turns, and everybody would tell about their day. And But I noticed that um, it wasn't the excitement, and they would forget things. They would literally forget things they had told me, like only a few hours before. And he was missing the, the excitement and, uh, you know, some of the stuff he would have totally missed if I hadn't been there to draw it back out of them so they could share it with him. And I knew that was a benefit. But I, I have to tell you, the benefit really took place when they were sad. And, you know, if you've had a seventh grader or a fifth or sixth grader, well, heck, any age, they come out and they're hurt. Their feelings are hurt. They've had an argument with someone. Their teacher said something to them, whether they meant it or not. And they're really sad. And that transition period and that car helps them because they're coming to you. You, as a mother, are the regulator. We've learned this um, from studies and from CAT scans and MRIs that a mother regulates a baby from the minute it's born. It teaches them right to regulate. It's another reason why being at home with your children in the first four years, five if you ask me, it is so important. But it even goes further when they get older and they're not with you and they come back in. They need to be regulated. Whether or not it's something really super exciting or something that is really, really sad and they feel dumb or they feel stupid and you're able to take care of that right then. They don't have to sit in it, in, in it anymore. They don't have to like, well, I'll just figure it out or they get distracted later and those feelings never get dealt with because you weren't there and they don't always know how to deal with it themselves. It is so, so important. Carpool, picking them up. Carpool, please. <laughs> I know, I know. But picking them up, you get to do that. 
You get to, you get to uh, feel that. Recently, I called down, um, I had to, we have a house in Austin, and I had to call down and talk to the pest control people. I had to make sure they had all that they needed from me. And the woman answered the phone, and she said, um, oh, Mrs. Corman, can I call you back? I'm on my way to pick up my children from school. And I said, oh, wow, that's great that you can do that. And she said, oh, yeah, I love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way, but carpool. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> carpool. And so she called me back. Oh, I told her, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something when you, when you get back and you call me, I'm going to tell you something real special about carpool. And so I shared this with her and she said, you know what? That is absolutely true. But she hadn't really thought of it as something really special that she was giving to her children. And so, you know, today I want you to think about that. I want you to think about what you do as a mom and how you regulate your children, even picking them up from, you know, a, a party or anything. When you're when you're involved and they are in a transition from one place to another, their emotions need to they need help to get through and to move on and to think things through and things that have happened. Not one of the things I think we miss when we think about raising kids is that when a child is born, their brains are not developed, not, not developed. Their brains do not fully get developed until they're, till they're like 23. And I think they're trying to even raise that higher. That frontal lobe takes a long time to close. But you're part of that. Actually, whoever is taking care of them, they are part of that. Are they doing what you would do? When, you know, I'm just going to um, dip into my toe into the water. It's not the first time I've said this. But it is the reason why I don't like daycares. And I'm not really excited about preschools unless it's like a day or two and it's, you know, like a couple hours, three or four hours or whatever. So you can have some time a mom's day out, which is what it should be called because it's for you. I will do a, um, I will do a podcast on, on my feelings about daycare. Uh, it's not feelings, it's knowledge, but they, they need to be able to have someone help them regulate. And when a child in a daycare or a child that is, you know, um, too young to be able to think these things through, you know what happens? They shut down. Parts of them shut down. And they don't learn how to be resilient. You would think it'd be the other way around, right? Well, nobody was there, so they just figured it out and they did it. Wrong because their brains are not developed. And this is the beauty of how God made it, that moms would be there. And you know we sacrifice so much more than anyone else. I am, I'm a really good mom, uh, was a good mom. I still am a good mom, but I mean to my little ones. But I'm not as good of a mom to my, my grandchildren. Their mom is the one that they need. I'm the grandma and I have my own special things, but they, they need their mom and there's, they instinctively know that it's their mom. They're looking for their mom. And when you as a mom are a place of comfort and a place where they can, can really let things out and be honest you are developing a great relationship that grows into a full adult that knows how to do that. And, he, and it knows how to do it with you. It's so interesting now that I'm older and my kids call. My kids call all the time. I mean, not every day. I don't want them to call every day. But they call often. And with five of them, I'm, I'm getting calls all the time. So I'm, I'm never lonely but they can, they can sense when I'm not right. They can sense when I'm not fully regulated. And I'm kind of a little, when I say regulated, let's just say I was a little off. You know, I wasn't just my, my normal self. They sense it. 
And it's because we are connected and we've grown this relationship in a way that we're connected in a way that we truly do know one another that well. So this gift that you give to your children, they actually give it back to you when you're older. Being, being at home with your children is such a miraculous thing. I'm not going to say it's easy, but I'm not going to say it's really hard either. It is harder than what you used to do and you already knew how to do it and then you went back to do it, but you felt good about it and you knew the, the standard for it and so you, you achieved the thing you did. I achieved lots of things before I had kids. Well, not before I had kids, but in my lifetime I have. But it's still that when you become a mom, everything's new. And even when you've done it two, three, four, five times, it's new every time because it's a new kid, it's a new uh, gender, it's a new, a new personality, it's a new way to discipline. And you have to learn every single time. So it's not just, oh, you know, this nut goes in this bowl, or I, this is where I sign people up at the dentist office so they can come in, and this is what I do if I'm a dental person or, you know, whatever. We kind of know what the standards are. We know what we're supposed to be doing. But when you're a mom, you don't have that always. Now, like I say, motherhood is not an, a natural talent. It's a skill, and you can learn it. The wonderful thing about that is that you are learning something that is going to go to the most precious thing. The thing I'm learning goes to this precious thing that I love and I would die for. And I'm learning so I can do that for them. It's why we need to learn. It's why we need to talk to older women and ask them, what in the world did you do? And they'll, they'll do like I do. Sometimes I can give you great advice about the carpool line, and then sometimes I'm going to tell you, like, don't yell at the lady in front of you, you know, and then you get in a fight. You know, I might have done that a couple times. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They can help. They can help the pitfalls and the cow patties, like I say. I don't want you to fall on those. But I don't want you to miss certain things either. So I hope that you'll just take this today and... Put it in your little noggin and, you know, just mull it around a little bit. I've said some controversial things and, you know, my intent is never to hurt anyone. My intent is to give you truth. And Mama Mona is always going to do that. And it, this isn't truth as I see it. This is truth that uh, we have medical proof of these things. And we have statistics and we have results and you're lucky you have them. So I hope that you will um, consider the things that I've talked about today. But more than that, I hope that you will cherish that carpool line. And you will think about when you have to, when you have to um, help your children transition. Just real quick, I do want to say, there were times when the sassiness was kind of bad in the car with lots of kids. And some people needed to be, some of my children, had to be disciplined. And I'm just going to give you one little heads up. For, for a couple times, I corrected them in front of everybody. And then some older woman made a suggestion that I just find a place in the parking lot and leave everybody in the car and take that child out to the back of the car to address them. So I didn't embarrass them or shame them. And I think that's a really good piece of advice that I got when I was a mom just like you. And if somebody was crying really hard and it was really a, a bad thing, I found a parking lot and I pulled over and I pulled that little baby girl into my lap and I just held her. And I helped her transition from a really sad moment to the comfort of her mother's arms so that she would know that she was okay. And I helped her regulate all of that together. There's nothing like a mom. There's nothing like you.
when you're a mom. And I just want you to know that we're here for you. So if you have questions, I hope that you'll send them to me, DM them to me at Mona at Mona, uh, momslikeus.com. We've got the Academy. You'll hear about that right after I'm done talking. Though There's a preview for that. The Academy opens here quickly um, in, in October. It's going to be open again. We have, we have trainings. We have deep uh, challenges. We help you walk through things monthly. And we not only show you how to do it, we tell you why it's good to do it. And then we're there with you along the way as you're learning to put it into action. It's just not another three-point um, Pinterest or a one-minute reel. We're here for real time, real time at the Moms Like Us Academy. Okay, that's it. Um, it is about time for me to make dinner. I hope you're going to have a good dinner tonight. And as you transition your kids, that you will love on them and keep them safe in your arms because moms like us do things like this. And I will see you the very next time. And I want you to be there. Bye for now.